The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 124, NASDAQ up 36, S&P's up 6.5, gold up $6, trading at 15.50 an ounce. You get silver up 18 cents, $17.93 an ounce. And a light sweet crude down 16 cents, $58.07 a barrel. We get oil this morning, right? We sure do, half hour from now. Notes, notes and bonds. You get the 10-year uh, up three ticks, trading 129.08, 30-year off up 12 at 158.08 in King Dollar. King Dollar down 120 ticks, trading 97.251. The euro is at 111. The yen is at 109.94, just about 110. And the pound's at 130 to 1 U.S. dollar. I guess right on the get-go out here, the Dow Industrials felt lonely because the good old Dow had not reached its high the last few days where the other indices were, and it just said, hey, guess what? Join the club. I gotta, Bring I gotta it on. be up here. So much for negative action in the market ahead of the open, man. Quite an acceleration. Look at that, huh? uh, can you go IGPO just to, yeah. to show that? Excel 930, man. They were ready for the gate to open, and kaboom, man. And they uh, opened it up. They sure did. I'm just going to jump over to the futures even because uh, if you see the pre-market, man, zoom it in. I mean, look, look at where we were, right? 8, 9 o'clock, it picks up, and then this is a 15-minute bar. 9.30, I'll put it in five yeah. minutes. 15 S&P points. It's just, I mean, look at that, hanging out, hanging out. And we're right up there, man. The high, 32.96.75. That was Monday, yes, Monday evening after. So I think we are we might be at an intraday high right okay. now on the S&P. The all-time high prints looking at the futures, 32.96. But boy, oh boy, five-minute bars. We were trading at 32.82. We're up uh, 13, 14 S&P points in a heartbeat, man. Pretty well. It is. Let's go inside the Dow Industrials and see uh, what's actually moving this thing out here this morning. And look at it's, it's funny. The United Health gets on both sides of it. Three hundred dollar stock, right? Yeah. That'll that'll move it for right. sure. So you get United Health putting fifty two positive points. Apple sixteen. IBM eleven. Uh, Big Mac eleven. Take yeah. it away from it, uh, like nothing. Walmart yeah. seven points. J P Morgan four. Um, Walgreens uh, boots uh, yeah. three. And right. Walmart probably trading lower on target, kind of guiding down on their forecast. Um, almost priced for perfection, man. I mean, they were looking for oh. big same source sales for target, and I think they came in at about 1.4%. They're okay. looking now, they're not out with their earnings, but this is just kind of a. Oh, really? Yeah. This is just a heads up? Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. so we get Walmart. I mean, you know, what you have here, this was a breakout, probably with the earnings, right? And now, yes. now bottom line is. They'll fill this gap, which is down what, 111, yeah. you know? I we mean, were down um, pre-market, I think 113 and change. Okay. So $5 yeah. already clawed back on that. And... Yeah, yeah maybe the top first one. one. Top one, yeah. Uh, slashing its quarterly sales outlook following yeah. the holiday season. That missed its expectations. And that's a warning sign for the entire yeah. retail sector oh, because yeah. if they suffered, Walmart probably expected to do the same. Comp sales, 1.4% November, December period, far less than last year's 5.7%. That was just a staggering, yeah. staggering number. Right. Um, the sheep chick retailers said the sluggish growth was most pronounced in toys and electronics. That's where they were supposed to crush it, too. Right. Which account for a higher portion of the company's business during the holidays, obviously, suffered from a lack of must-have items. Slower digital sales growth and a calendar shift with fewer days in between Thanksgiving. They're all well, going to blend six days. Yeah. There's no, that, that is known, okay? I, right. I understand, you know, if you want to talk about, you know, that now this is where it might contribute to not having this type of number, right? But 5.7, yeah, yes. But they already knew this when they were talking about their outlook oh, yeah. coming into the holiday season. Um, some consumers decided to preserve their budgets for holiday things rather than splash on big ticket bargains. Um, Let's see, that's some analysts. Moreover, technology lineup in electronics far from expiring. I would kind of agree with that. Name yeah. one big electronics item right. that was a must-have. You know, I mean, you could say those new Apple AirPods <laughs> that were 250 bucks. 
a boy, oh boy. I mean, that's quite. We a, almost have everything. I I agree. That's, that's where you, you know, know. I mean, what's going to be the next breakthrough? Yeah. I mean, that, that's 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 the reality. I agree. Of I agree. You know what I mean? How about so, the banks? Goldman Sachs, Bank yeah. of America. You know, Goldman. Okay. Bottom line is that uh, you got Goldman out here. Look at this. We're positive. Yeah. Just like that. Shake Re it off, man. Rejected 239. Okay. And bottom line is that they had a write-off uh, this quarter. That You know, it, it, folks, it is just so amazing and how much banks can make and how much they write off. And I was just saying to Tommy, I says, you know, the, the white-collar criminals that, like, get grabbed for smaller things must go out of their mind because if you're going to go... Fraud, you got to go big, man. I mean, you, you got to be a Goldman, you got to be a Citibank, you got to be a, you know, a Wells Fargo. Yes. So, this part of the write off, it looks like, is only for the legal bill, okay, not yeah. for the fine that's going to come down. Right. Yeah, they, yeah. Somewhere in here is a $1.1 billion <laughs> legal bill. Oh, man. Uh, so, let's see what they got. Let's see. So this is all the analysts. Maybe if we jump, yeah. here you go. You want to, I'm just yeah, going to jump around. Yeah. Maybe because um, there's the one billion. Let's see how this. Ah, this is going to be intelligence. No. All right, we're going to jump back and let's go here. Okay, there we here go. we go. That's the one. So let's see. Earnings per share. There's the miss, man. 469, and they were looking for 552. Yeah. That's a big one. Right. Um, the fixed income trading, big number, 1.77 billion. 63% year on year. I wonder what they were looking for, though. Um, banking revenue, 2.06 billion. Trading revenue, 3.48. Let's see. So fourth quarter net revenues. This is where the real numbers. Almost 10 billion, and they were only looking for 8.56. The right. range was as low as eight. Look at that. And they came in with 10. Yeah. That's almost 25% yeah. above. You know, if if you're looking for 8 billion in revenue, you come in at 10. That's an extra 2 billion revenue. You're only looking for eight. My goodness, and this 90 is in days. 90 days, folks. Um, return on equity, 8.7. A year ago, it was 12. But just they crushed it versus the estimates, man. Oh, yeah. I wonder. And let's see. Here we go. So during 2019, recorded net provisions for litigation and regulatory proceedings of 1.24 billion, which reduced earnings per share by three dollars and sixteen cents, and reduced. Return on equity by 1.5 percentage points. Um, Pretty wild, right? Yeah, because where is their earnings per share? Their earnings per share is 469, and their litigation dropped it by 316. Right. It's huge. Yeah. It is. But uh, and I'm just going to jump because I think they were even lower pre-market in terms of the charge back that they had. No, they weren't. So they opened almost at the low and shot right out. Is that Goldman we were looking at, right? Yes, yes it was. was yeah. um, so this just hasn't caught up, I think. Maybe. Yeah, this is still a delay, which is why we're positive now. Yep. And then how about uh, Bank of America? BAC. Jump over. Yep. Uh, one more time. Okay. So we have that trading down 72 cents. Okay. It was as low as 34.34. We're at 34.60 right now. That looks like it's rejecting lower price, too. So yeah. let's see what they have to say. Uh... Maybe this one. Yeah, we'll pull it up during the break. Maybe the second one. Had a lot of numbers in there. Yeah. Trading revenue climbed 13 percent. They all uh, and the bond trading went dramatically. It's here a good too. good quarter to be a bond trader. Yeah, big time. You know, and that. And that, when we say that, folks, okay. we got the music coming, so we'll be right back, folks. Oh. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up a buck thirty-five. Nasdaq up twenty-four. S and P's up five and a half. And we are going to have uh, oil out here today, right? We sure are. So Let's this go oil market this. has been uh, struggling, folks. And neither <laughs> uh, in a yeah, uh, right. Pretty amazing. Can't catch a bid no matter what's going right. on in the Middle East, no matter what is happening, because of the just uh, huge numbers of supplies that yeah. seems to be coming on the market right. on a continual basis. So we get crude EIA inventory numbers in 12 minutes from right now, 10.30 a.m. Survey number was looking, is looking for an increase of about 1.1 million barrels. What's going on with the whisper number, man? The market, not so much inclined to say that we're looking for the build that the survey number's looking right. for. 55,000 gallons, five barrels. Right? Yeah, 55,000, yeah. which is basically flat um, for yeah. that market. And let's pull up and see where we're trading at. So I'm going to go into commodities. I'm going to go into crude. I'm going to close these out as the market just climbs higher. I believe we just got a new all-time high print on the S&Ps we as did, well. By 2,500. Not bad. So we got crude right now trading just a hair under $58. We're looking at the February contract. Uh, so what's nice is right away I know the 230s yeah. are going to have a daily limit in terms of we can get exposure from $58. I'm going to jump back to those in a moment because first I'm going to see where we're at on the 11 AMs. All right. So we have $58. This will give us a half hour after the news comes out for exposure. There's our bullish spread, 58 to 59.50. There's our bearish spread, 58 to 56.50. If we're buying the bullish, we're selling the bearish, looking at about $32. Um, now, just something to be aware of here. This spread, five, six, seven, it's closing a bit here, but there's a little bit of a bigger versus, there's three ticks, two tick bid offer spread on the bullish, and it was four to five to six ticks here on the bearish. Yeah, right? Right. That's a little bit, you just want to be careful when you're, you're paying that big of a bid offer spread, because um, they really matter percentage-wise. Oh, you know, yeah. If you're paying... And like I said, 32 about, so let's jump to the noons and see if we have a similar price. So we sure do. So those were the 11s. And what's interesting is, so for the yeah. 11 alone, you're paying 58.11. The contract's at 57.91. If you want an extra hour of exposure, they're going to make you pay about six pennies. Yep. Not bad, man, for an no, extra hour on one not. side. Even if you're just bullish, you're looking for a rebound. Not, and not the, the way the oil has been moving. Yeah. I mean, six pennies is like a... 
Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so there would be your bullish spread. There's our bearish spread. Again, we're buying the bullish. That's costing us $19. We're out of the money. We're selling the bearish. That's costing us 21. We have about two to three cents. pennies. Yep. So you're paying 40 cents for the noon. And then let's see where these big. Now the difference here, of course, is that you only have a buck 50 of exposure for the 11 and the noon. You're going to get five dollars of exposure. Now, normally, before all these geopolitical things. This is a 230. Yes. Right. Okay. And before all these geopolitical things going on, I would say very rarely you're going to get a buck 50 movement by 230 in right. either direction. But man, oh man, you don't know. There could be, uh -huh. unfortunately, I hope not, you know, some tensions, some missile strikes, some, a reaction from Iran, a statement from the president. Uh, 58 to 63, you're buying it at 58, 26. You're at six pennies out of the money. So you're paying $26 for the bullish. Bearish spread, you're paying $29. The difference being, you have a little bit of intrinsic value. Not bad, so you're paying, what, 50, 60 cents, $54 yeah. um, for both sides of the market until 2.30. I like that trade, man. I really do. On a day where... Let me see where we're at. CL active contract is February. It sure is. That's what we're looking at. So just a okay. hair under 58. Uh, look at... So this is interesting because, I mean, what should happen here, this has been, you know, this is major support right here. So okay. it's like, well, I, I'd say you can get a little pop here. You know, so... I don't think it's as bearish as, you know, I mean, I think in the long term, we're going to 55, 50 bucks there. But short term, it looks to me like you get a little pop out of here. So let's see what we got. Do you want to look for a decline? Um, Where are we going? Yeah, why not? Might make it 55 negative or something. Sure. We'll yeah. go minus 55. Right. There we go. A little bit of a draw when yeah. the market seems to be looking for a little bit of a build. It looks to me like you get a little pop here. Yeah. Yeah. And um, let's see, where's our gas? So gas inventory is coming out as well. What are the market? Market looking for a building gas between about 3.2 million barrels to 4.8 million barrels when we get those numbers in about seven minutes from right now. Pretty wild. Oh, pretty wild. We'll find out. And, yeah, so we'll see how this baby does shake out. We got... Uh Whiz. Can we can we tempt to Putin? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, this is a great one, folks. <laughs> the so dictator. I, I the see ultimate the, dictator. Yeah, I see the headline um, climb across today. Russian government resigns. So what? What's going on? Uh, Why would Putin uh, resign? Well, yeah, it is not Putin resigning. Everyone it's everybody, but, but um, Vladimir Putin will choose a new government following the abrupt resignation of Prime Minister Medvedev hours after the Kremlin leader called for a sweeping constitutional changes. Fueling speculation, he's laying the groundwork to keep power beyond the end of his current term in 2024. Is that speculation or is that certainty? Because I would be all but surprised, shocked, call it what you want, if, if he gives up power when he doesn't have to. So under the existing constitution, constitution, Putin is to step down as president then, but could take another post to ensure his continued influence. Which he did last time. Yep. Putin gave very little gave little public explanation for the dramatic and unexpected upheaval, which saw Medvedev, one of his most loyal lieutenants, ousted after nearly eight years in office. Medvedev came, became premier in 2012 after stepping down as president to make way for Putin's return to the Kremlin. He will take a new position as deputy chairman of the Security Council, reporting to Putin. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess shocked even some top officials came after Putin outlined a raft of proposed constitutional changes State of the Union address Wednesday aimed at who are these officials that were shocked by Putin making a power grab because they need to have their their um, credentials checked in terms of being a yeah. quote-unquote top official and surprised that Putin's doing everything he can to, to consolidate power. So let's see, the, re the reform set out will mean fundamental changes in the Constitution, the balance of power, uh, in these circumstances I think the right, so let's, I've, it's all about a transition of power I mean, the bottom line is, that, well, you'd have to dig into it a little bit more, but Putin's going to be there forever. That's the bottom yeah. line. Yeah. I mean, you had Medvedev serving for president from 20, 2008 to 2012. Yeah. Putin left to comply with the term limits, but then that's when Medvedev stepped back out in 2012. Putin steps back in. Um, seen initially as a standard bearer for liberal reforms, he surrendered the presidency back to Putin at the end of his first term after they disclosed in 2011 that job swap had been agreed on years earlier. Um, he's been among Putin's closest political allies since they worked together 
in the St. Petersburg City Council in the early 90s after the Soviet collapse. Remember 2020. Yeah. Think about that. Oh, right. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> He's always been a dictator anyway. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's he's, like, he's the head of the KGB, man. Yeah. Right. Watch out. Pretty easy. Watch right. out. 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at uh, Tesla. And Tesla's down a couple bucks out here today. Down $4. They're, just, they, they're not selling it off, man. No. I mean, That is know, not a sell-off on that chart. That's pretty amazing. It sure it's, is. It's, I think uh, the $100 billion mark on Tesla pegs it at about $554. That's what you need for that price tag. Oof. Yeah, look at that. You're oh, right yeah. next to it, we man. We were at 548 yesterday. I mean, I, I was ready for the, the, I was ready for the Elon tweet. Wow. Yeah, we'll get it. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We're gonna have that oil number for you. Dow Industrial. Dow, Dow's up 130. Nasdaq is up 30. S and P's up five and a half. Come right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, crude. Crude inventories fell 2.5 million barrels. That was a draw, so right? So much for a build. Yes, yeah. coming in with quite yeah, a draw. should have went higher. 2.5 yeah. million barrels. Yeah, you should have swung for the fences on that estimate, yeah. right? Uh, so much less oil than the market was looking for. 
and that would usually say we're going to get a spike in. Oh, look at that. I was going to say, usually would say we're going to get a spike in prices, right? Look at that. Um, but the market, man, no such thing as a bid in the price of crude. This says quite a bit. It man. sure does. So we get a draw of 2.5 million barrels, and the price drops from 58 to 57. And they were expecting a build. They were. Yeah, now you can go both. Yeah, the analyst estimate, look for a bid, somehow the whisper number. So there was sentiment moving to maybe not quite as build. You could, you yeah. could almost call the whisper number flat. But nonetheless, decline of 2.5 million barrels, and the market says, we're still going south, man. Yep. Negative by about 25 wow. cents. Yeah. That's pretty intense. It sure is. That's, it sure there's is. No, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. That's actually amazing, right? And I guess we got a big build in gasoline also, right? Gasoline inventory is rising 6.68 million barrels. Yeah. And you know what? I bet... Distillate's rising 8.17. Oh, yeah. That's why this thing's going south, man. I mean... Yeah. Lots yeah, of gas. That's, lots of gas. That's... That's pretty amazing. So actually. weekly crude because production. None of us are buying, you know, barrels of oil. Well, we're buying the distillates and we're buying gas. And look at how much there is. And maybe this is why the price is dropping. We have a record high weekly crude production coming from the U.S. So no matter what's happening in the Middle wow. East, man. 13 million barrels. 13 million barrels a day. Every single a day. day. Yes. <sighs> barrels Holy a day. Yep. Wow. That's, bad. That's intense. I agree, man. I agree. That is amazing. Well, there Let's we go. See what we got going on. Anything plenty, else? Yeah. Plenty, of, plenty of energy. So there's the print. Gasoline, 6.6. .6. The estimate was a rise of 3.2. Distillates, look at that beat. 8.1. Estimate was 1.6. Uh, and we'd, ha we'd have with distillates, folks, okay? The reason that that one is so important is that in the winter, that's your heating oil. Okay. That, that's the whole northeast, the Midwest. Okay. If you have heating oil, that's what a distillate is. It's like, okay. But we can see this. We, you know, we were telling me last week it was 64 in Boston for a day. Well, sure. Guess yeah. what? No one had to put their, yeah. use their heat. And I think know? that was over the weekend. Everyone was out and about yeah, right. walking the dog in Central Park in New York right. for 64 degrees in January. Right. Uh, and that's, you know, the commentary just from Bloomberg. And guess the market's focused on yet another large build in gasoline because despite yeah. the draw, crude futures are weaker on that number. So we'll check back in the, uh, in the hour for the remainder. But one more quick check because we know this market moves quick sometimes. And it's continuing to drop 5770 right now. That's gotta be frustrating, man, if you are a bull. And I don't know why you would be a bull right. in crude oil right, right. now, which what's right. going on. And maybe right. this will shake it off from you. But boy, oh boy, you get a, a miss by millions of barrels, and uh, and the market says, Nope, we're going south, man. It's a huge room. Yeah. So let's go take a look at an eco eagle. I was talking about the set uh, yesterday afternoon, folks, when we were on the air. Um, now, we don't own this right now. I, I have, uh, but bottom line, I don't own it right now. The, the low is 38, the high is 64. And when I was on the air yesterday, man, you should have seen what was going on. Like, someone was coming in here buying this thing. And look at the volume on this thing. 6.4 million shares. That's a decent bar. It was sick. <laughs> now, what had happened, and, and what happens, folks, is that we were doing this live. Okay. I just happened to bring it up. And then what happens is if I, if I do a... On the Bloomberg, an AQR, it gives yes. you the highest um, volume yes. single buys or sells, sure. right? And man, oh man, this thing just kept coming in. Someone was buying a million, 900,000, 2 million at a time. I mean, it was crazy. Um, so there we go. I there just it is. It oh, how yesterday. cool was that? Yeah, you can okay. move the dates. We got it from yesterday. There's the prints, right? <laughs> Your show, 3 o'clock. There's exactly. 2.1 million and a million right underneath it. And then look at the rest of them. You know, 10 o'clock in the morning, 99,000, yeah, 12, huge, 99. Huge. Um, and, you know, we won't know. You may never know, okay, who's coming into it. At the end of the, the quarter, the 13 Fs come in, okay? And if yes. someone, you know, explodes up to the other sure, side. Sure, sure. But that's really unusual to see something like that yes, live. That is a big, big, you know? big volume trade it for is, sure. Man. And, you know, the, the real, the hardest part sometimes is to understand that are they buys or sells? I speculated it was a buy because the price wasn't getting destroyed. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you try to sell 5 million shares, it's yeah. like, okay, man, you know, yes, you're, yes. you're going at a lower price. But Yeah, I mean, because to put things in context, man, those two, the first, the top one was a 2 million share trade. Yeah. The, the second one was a million share trade. Right. Uh, most days you're doing 1.5 million shares I know. for the entire day, right? I know. Some days... Now, to be fair, this is the holiday season, yeah. but, you know, Christmas Eve, you did 470,000. Right. No, no, December 27th, you did 730,000. Picking an arbitrary day, December 6th, a million on the dot. Yeah. So, huge, huge you know, fun. So, someone came in. Yes. In fact, let's see if, if, if someone had come in and they owned more than 5% of it, they'd have to tell us right now, but I doubt that's the case. 
No, there's What's no great is there's you can just scan for 2020, and we got nothing there so far on yeah, those. Yeah, exactly. Nope, nothing there on those. Nope. Maybe one more. Click the latest change to get on the negative yeah. side. Nope, nothing nope, there. Nothing so, there. No, no, so, no updates since September. So they're not going over 5%, but we'll follow that along and, and see uh, where that goes, because what you, what you want to look at is that, okay, will that buying continue? Sure. You know, sure. because most times large funds like that don't, buy the same day. Yeah, you, know what I mean? you don't you say what it's going to take. Four million a, shares. Right. Like, I'm going to buy them today. Especially when, you know, you say, we want a two million share position. Right. And they go, what's the daily volume on that? Yeah. 1.5 million shares. Right. Good. Buy them all at 350. And then, no, exactly. that's not how it works. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, silver. Let's go take a look at the silver market out here. So silver and, and gold and silver, you know, basically have a bid out here today, but have backed down uh, since the, the market opened. Not Silver, not bad. 1793. Uh, you get 52,000 contracts, which now this is going to be good contract volume, uh, which is really okay. sweet. You know, yesterday all day we did 884,000. Yep. That, and that's what you want to see if you're a bull, folks, okay? This is early in the morning for that many contracts. So it's still going to take quite a bit, um, but I suspect we're bottomed out here yesterday. That's what it looks like to me. We came into the breakout area from the 24th, had tremendously lighter volume, you know. Yes. Got some action here. So. Yeah. We'll see where the rest of this is going to shake out. If I go to the GDX, because what happens there in the GDX, you can see, okay, so the breakout area there, the bottom of that was 27.89, 70 million shares, 27.68, and rejected it with uh, 58 million. Okay. So now it needs volume. That's, okay. the, that's the bottom line. We know. Once you get the rejection, it's like, okay, now what are you going to do for me? Now, do, sure. we have, do we have a buyer? You know, do we have a buyer in there? Yeah. We certainly have a buyer in the broad market. We sure do, you know, man. I mean, the market, you know, basically the monopoly inside the market, folks, is Sherwin Williams Green. Green paint. Yeah. They're selling lots of it. <laughs> They're selling lots of it. They man. sure are. Let's go into the NDX 100 and see the strengths versus the weakness inside the NDX. Oh, this is a new one. Oh, where am I in Europe? How did I do that? I, mm. That's interesting. No. Yeah, UW. See what's happening? Oh, See, okay. This, that's crazy. Okay, so let me start with this. You sure? I don't know. No. Well, when they have the, an extra okay. deal behind it, that's yeah. what happens. Nope, you're no, there. Same yeah. thing. I don't know why it's UW, man. Go into, go in, go into the description yeah, for them, yeah. Oh, yeah. Chicago. It's a holding company, okay. maybe. That's what. Yeah. So you got uh, Excellent Corporation. Um, yeah. That's the leader out there. Mm. Percentage wise. Yeah, percent, got, up 1.9%. Yeah. You got ADP on oh, drugs. That's, that's interesting, man. Okay. Payroll, ADP huh? going higher. Uh, that means, oh, and look at Syntas. Our man Basil Chapman. This is, this is a great stock to watch, too, folks. Um, they I sell all the uniforms. Economy. It so, is. Yeah. Hitting all time highs. Stay right there, Tommy and I. Come right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up 164, NASDAQ up 41, S&P is up 8. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock. That website is forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, what's happening, brother? Good morning, guys. Pretty interesting setups in the currencies going on today, I think. No doubt. Let's, let's talk about it. Where do you want to start? Um, well, I know you like the yen, so how about that uh, little oh, rally we have going on? It's like a scary. balloon underwater, huh? That's scary to me, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's take a look at that yen. And what I'm talking about here, folks, is that it's at the top of its range, and it's like, get out of that range, man. That, you know, it, it failed, you know, almost yesterday, but that... That mm -hmm. 109.73 is a big number, you know, so. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So and I think what, the bull is going to stay there with the U.S. dollar yen for oh. a while. Okay, okay. So if that's the case, then let's see. I mean, what, that, that puts game on, uh, man, does that, I mean, does that, that could put game on to what, 111 or 112, right? Absolutely. I, mean, I think yeah. those are very good price targets for the not-too-distant future, actually. Tom, that's not good. I, what does that do to gold? <laughs> that's not good if for they, the gold market. If anyone's market, been folks. watching the show, they know. We got we to keep our eye on that gold contract, man. Holy cow. Sure. Okay. Sure. Well, yeah. I think that the gold contract, too, with the whole Middle East thing, finally subs you know, coming to a little bit of a calmness on Friday kind of gave gold a little bit of a hit. Yeah. No, no doubt. There's no doubt about that. And you know, it's, it's, so. it's intriguing, Teddy, is that... In my thinking, it's the first time that gold actually has traded like that in 20 years. You know, we've had plenty mm -hmm. of geopolitical events, but gold, you know, 20 years ago, folks, you know, you'd see gold run 20, 30 points both ways like in a heartbeat. And that's the mm -hmm. first time that it actually did it, you know, which I think is pretty cool, actually, because, you know, uh -huh. we'll see. I think it's just a correction what it's doing now, though. I think gold may long term might be a really, really big bull. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm a bull. There's no doubt. I'm trying to figure out now with this yen. You know, like even yesterday, why gold didn't actually really get smoked yesterday. Do you know what I mean? It came mm -hmm. back to its breakout area. It held. It had light volume. But, you know, when that yen moves, you got to be careful in the metals market, man. That's the bottom line. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so. Is the, Euro, the Euro is moving a little this morning, right? The Euro's uh, nicely getting in a, a little bit of a rally there for the bulls. But I think that you're going to see a lot of... A lot of range trading conditions now in the euro and also in the British pound for the next couple of weeks because we have the Brexit deadline now. So today we have the first phase of the trade deal. Okay. doesn't really impact the European currencies. It's more for the yen. Uh, but definitely with the, uh, the Brexit on the uh, 31st of January coming up, I think you're going to see pretty much a tightening of the trade for the pound and the euro for the next week, uh, two weeks. I don't think it's going to be a swing trader's uh, delight at all. Okay. So the 31st of January, 
or I mean, is this when like something you know really important is supposed to happen? Or are we going to kick this thing down the, the can a little again? Well, it's definitely the first marker on Brexit for sure okay. on the 31st. That's the first stage of leaving the EU. I got so, it. So okay. Yeah, and then they have to haggle out the the trade deal by the deadline is December. But we've been watching Brexit now for what two and a half, three years. So <laughs> if it's anything like that, we'll be talking about this trade deal between the EU and the UK for years to come. So, but I think the interesting currency really to watch right now that most people aren't talking about yep. is the flight to quality going on in the Swiss franc. It's oh. Um, oh, it's a bull versus the dollar for sure. It's slamming new lows. I think that's the driver in the dollar index. And if you look at the Swiss versus the pound or versus the yen or versus the euro, euro it's incredible. Like I have not seen a currency trend this strong against the other major currencies. And the velocity of the rally is, is just insane. Yeah, really? what happened to parity? Not anymore, right? 96. Wow, no. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think this is a trend you're going to see. Like, for the currency markets, it's really tough to gauge a trend for the European markets until this Brexit thing starts to get passed into February and stuff like that. Okay. But the Swiss, it doesn't seem to care. And even with the Middle East thing that we went through, it was just a speed bump. It just doesn't, it's a bull. It just doesn't seem to want to stop at all. So you're at 96. I mean, look at the bottom of this consolidation looks like 91, right? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Like if you look at the uh, the Swiss franc versus the Japanese yen, okay. it's it's got a blow off rally going on right now. Does it? And the same thing is going on with the pound also. I mean the pound versus the Swiss, it's like a rock just falling down towards the just looking for a bottom. You wow. know. Yeah. That's... So it tells me flight to quality in the Swiss franc. It's very, very strong versus all the global currencies right now, which is kind of weird because we don't have any real political fundamentals that should be driving it. So I'm, I'm curious as to what it is. This is not a technical rally that's going on. There's some fundamental that's driving it. Okay. And I don't know what it is. Yeah, that's interesting. So, because you know what's so intriguing about that too, really, is that, okay, if that's moving like that, then I might still have a shot at the gold market. Interesting. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! That's too funny. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it is definitely an interesting trend that's going on, and no, no one's talking about it. Even globally, I like I, I look at a lot of the currency crosses that are analyzed, um, you know, outside of the U.S., and no one's really talking about the rally that's going on in the Swiss. And I can't, for the life of me, figure out why it's so strong right now. Can you imagine what a Big Mac cost over there now? I'm gonna have one of my <laughs> best friends. Oh, is he still yeah. there? Is Jay there? Yeah, okay. Oh, that's awesome. We yeah. can find out. One of my yeah. best buddies in Switzerland. I'm going to call him up and ask him how much he's paying. When I visited yeah. him, the funny thing was they don't, they don't sell uh, much ice over there because everything's so expensive. Okay. Um, so they don't sell ice because who's going to buy ice when, uh, you know, it's just too expensive to even buy over there. <laughs> but everything, everything, Big Macs, man, $12, whatever it is, yeah. Yeah. $12 for a Big Mac. That's hysterical. I know. <laughs> yeah. They don't have the two for $5 special going that's on. That's right. They no. don't. No. No. Not even they don't close. have Florida prices uh, or Chicago prices for their Big Macs. Right. Yeah. And now and now with that strength here, I mean, you're talking about monster bread here. Yes. There's no two ways about yeah. it. You know, it's funny you mentioned the Big Mac, too, guys, because there is a Big Mac index, which they use for currencies. And I wonder how that relationship to the Swiss franc is right now, because usually they peg it to the dollar. Okay. But it's an interesting, It's I, I know it sounds absurd, but there really is a Big Mac index. That I you would can believe it. That would make sense. There's only one McDonald's, man. I mean, that's yeah. a great correlation of, of real value, right. right, in terms of what you can mm -hmm. buy, what it's priced in, yeah. The only reason we have money yep. is to buy things, right? Hey, there's only one McDonald's, man, exactly. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. parity in terms of what's it, what's it cost, where are you going to be? My God. Yeah. So, but I guess, they don't teach you in Harvard Business School. Right? No, no, that's real value, though. No, it is, well, Harvard Business School. That, isn't that isn't that where all the, the Goldman brokers go, so they can pay a billion dollars in um, legal fees, so they can get away with their frauds, right? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. They're all connected out of there. That's that was for a sure. Nice segue. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I mean, I it's just a nonstop deal with these banks. No, I was it is. saying a little bit right. earlier, Teddy. Imagine. You know, if you're you know, a white-collar criminal and you did something small and you're all sitting in jail scratching your head like, oh, my God, I, sure. didn't, I didn't go big enough, man. you got to go big. You know? Oh, and just think about what they're going to do once rates start to really go up and the banks really start to clean up on making yeah, money. Yeah, pretty amazing. Pretty crazy.
So, okay, so this week, uh, the yen, the yen's thing we got to keep our eye on. The yen right? is, the, it's going to keep pressuring the highs, I think. I think, like I said, the European uh, currencies, the euro and the pound, I think the next two weeks, it's going to be a range trader's uh, delight and a swing trader's nightmare. Okay. You got to look at the yen and maybe the, well, the Swiss, but that's a trend trade, no matter no. where it's going. And folks, uh, Friday, Friday afternoon, Teddy's going to be doing my show, three to four. So yep. stay tuned, Pet Teddy, I really appreciate it, man. Three to four, no Friday problem. afternoon. You have Thanks, a great guys. one, a safe one. Thanks, Teddy. Thanks, Teddy. All right. Take care. See you Friday, man. Stay right there. Tell folks, Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow up 151, Nasdaq up 41, S&P's up 8. We have uh, gold up 550, silver up 20 cents, and uh, notes and bonds, man, they're not giving it up, so it's pretty wild. I'm just going to check back in on crude. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's continuing that drop, man. We touched 57.38, so we're trading about at $58, talking about 60, 65 pennies to the south. Uh, quite a level on the price of crude, and if you put this on a little bit of a longer time frame, now, this is going to get a little funky, but there you go. We're at lows, man, going back to December. Uh, far cry from where we were just a week it's ago. It's amazing, man. Yeah, it's... it sure is. And I know you were talking about on your show last night, right? Of course, the video. Did you check out that video that the New York Times put out, the two missiles that supposedly hit I that didn't. plane? I did Yeah. No. Um, it's, you know, 
remarkable when you realize what you are watching, right, in terms yes. of a plane. Right. Um, and they're from afar, you'd say it's like eight miles away, yeah. very grainy video, not okay. like it's super detailed. Right. But when you know those small things are missiles being fired, and you know that the explosions in the air. And what it was, folks, plane. One, one missile hit the plane, 30 yes. seconds later, second missile hit the plane, and yep. that's all she wrote. Yeah. Yeah. So. so, I mean, just remarkable that oil does what it does in the light of those videos coming out yesterday. I know. Uh, I protest and I ran persisting. Yeah. Um, there were reports I saw on Twitter, I don't know if they were confirmed, of another missiles firing, whether it was a U.S. base. It's just constant geopolitical risk. And, oh, yeah. and oil is saying, hey, guess what? The United States is producing 13 million barrels a, a day. day. A day. A day. And yeah. now you're not even talking, you know, wind power, solar power, right. electric power. You might you know. see a decrease in demand at a time when you're seeing a huge increase in supply. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Stay right there, folks. we got uh, Think of Swim coming up next, and um, we're going to go to uh, MMs to Steve Rhodes, Dave Wright. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Oh, go get them, folks.